It's tough finding the right capacitor these days. That old-time strategy of sliding up to a nice electrolytic at a bar, buying it a drink, and enjoying a long, happy decoupling relationship just doesn't cut it. These days, the capacitance game is all about swiping left and swiping right. Swipe left. Nope, too big of a footprint. Swipe left again. Temperature is too limited. Swipe left again. Terrible profile picture. Ugh. All these capacitors and none of them is a perfect fit. All right, we do know that there is no such thing as an ideal capacitor, right? But how we find the right capacitor can be easier than ever before. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In the world of capacitance, the old saying, one size fits all, is nowhere near the truth. But an online tool called KSIM by Kemet can make navigating your way through the choice of a capacitor a whole lot easier. Today, Wilmer Campioni and I chat all about KSIM and how you can use it and how you can find the capacitor of your dreams. Okay, you may dream differently than me, but let's get started. Oh, and before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out more information about KSIM from Kemet. Hi, Wilmer. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. It's great to be here. Okay, so we're here to talk about KSIM capacitors, but first, what is this KSIM you speak of? Okay, yeah, so KSIM is our component simulation tool. It essentially allows you to do parametric component simulation where you can compare the electrical performance of different capacitors and different capacitor technologies. You can get into comparing impedance and ESR characteristics, current and voltage, capacitance and inductance, as well as its performance of capacitance versus voltage. Cool, so why would I need something like this? Well, that's a good question. And it really has to do with the fact that capacitors are not just parallel plates. There's a lot more that goes into it than just parallel plates. And if we look here at our two different capacitor technologies, our tantalum technologies and our MLCC technologies, you can see that on the tantalum side, a tantalum capacitor at its core is a slug of sintered tantalum powder with an oxide dielectric and then a cathode material grown on the other side. Then if you look at the equivalent circuit model for that, it's an RC step ladder type of topology. Whereas if you look on the MLCC side, it's essentially laminated layers of electrodes separated by ceramic dielectric material. And that equivalent circuit model is a typical lumped circuit element RLC type of model. So Wilmer, how would I know what I need? Where do I start? Well, firstly, when you compare the two technologies, one size doesn't fit all. There's no such thing as an ideal capacitor. And it'll be the application that best determines which capacitor to use. If you look at a ceramic capacitor, they're small, they have medium-ish sort of cap range, wide temperature and wide voltage ranges with very low ESR. On the other side of it, they have a piezoelectric effect. They also have a voltage coefficient of capacitance effect. And if you look at tantalum capacitors, they're very, very good with their volumetric efficiency. They have a wide frequency band and they're very stable. However, their low-ish temperatures, less than 125 degrees for the most part, and they're relatively low voltage. Whereas in a ceramic capacitor, high voltage would be 500 volts and higher. In a tantalum capacitor, anything greater than 35 volts would be considered a high voltage capacitor. And then a technology that we didn't really discuss but is also important is film-based capacitors. Those are very high cap, high voltage, limited temperature because of the film material itself. So there's a lot of factors to consider when trying to pick one. When trying to determine a capacitor performance, that's why we've gone ahead and created KSIM so that you can compare different capacitor characteristics. Okay, so what kind of things can I find in KSIM? So in KSIM, you can find the, as I mentioned earlier, the impedance in ESR, the ESL. You can simulate the capacitance versus voltage. So why don't we just go off and get into the demo and show you how to do it. So here we are on Mauser's website. And if we type in our part number of interest, which in this case, it's a C1206 C... 106K8RAC, 
and we navigate to the part page, there's a link here in the description that says View Simulation and Spice Model in KSIM. So right here from Mauser's part page, you can go directly into KSIM. So the first plot you're greeted with is impedance and ESR. And one of the important things to note is that right here at this point, that is the self-resonant point of the capacitor. So at that point, the capacitor reactance drops to zero and then the impedance is equal to the real part or the ESR. Another plot to look at is the capacitance and inductance. So this is a plot of capacitance and inductance. Here the capacitance is in the red line and then the blue line is the inductance. So this, again, this discontinuity here is also the self-resonant point. And this being a class two X7R capacitor has the so-called voltage coefficient of capacitance, which is an effect that happens that your total effective capacitance drops as you apply DC bias voltage. And we can simulate that and look at that here as well. So changing over to capacitance versus V bias, we see here that as on the x-axis, as you go up in frequency, you've lost a certain percentage of your nominal capacitance. Now, I always hear that ESL is important as well. Can I get that with KSIM? Well, yes, you can. Actually, if we go back to our capacitance and inductance plot two, and then show our calculated KSIM values, this lighter blue line here, that's your effective ESL of, of the capacitor. Okay, and you talked about your models before. Can we get those from this tool as well? You can indeed. Let's just go back quickly to the Mauser website and pick another part, just to show that we have more than one type of capacitor in KSIM. So this time we're gonna pick a KO cap, a tantalum polymer capacitor. So Let's do a T520A106M010 ATE080. So once again, we travel over to the part page and view the simulation and spice model in case M. So again, the first thing that comes up is the impedance and ESR, but if we choose our little drop down here and go over to SPICE model, there's that stepped RC model I was talking about that shows all the different values. And then on the x-axis, you can select your frequency of operation. And as you can see, the values for each of those components changes. So if I were to click and lock my cursor in place, then go to export spice model. A window pops up that gives me a netlist for that RC model at my selected frequency. And there's different model formats that you can download. You can either download that model or email it to yourself. And the netlist models are not the only models that we have. We also have S parameter models. So if we pick S11 or S21 versus frequency, there's our S21 versus frequency for this particular capacitor. And then go to export S2P. Here's a snippet of the S2P file that you can then use that in another tool like ADS for more broadband RF type of simulations. So how do you guys get these parts into KSIM? That's a great question, Amelia. So first, let me sort of go into a bit of the under the hood and inner workings of KSIM. KSIM is actually a combination of measured data plus mathematical models. We have a set of characteristic equations that govern the general trends of the equations of the models. And there are certain coefficients that I have highlighted there in red, coefficients and constants that give these models their shape. So what we do is we measure a part and then we overlay that with our models and 
change those coefficients to, to the point where they line up. And then we save those off in a database and we call them our seed files. So every part has its characteristic set of seed values that give the models their shape. So it's a merge of measured data plus simulated data. That's really cool. So, Wilmer, what do you guys see coming up in the future with KSIM? Well, in the short term, as with any good piece of software, we have some regular maintenance and bug fixes to do. We also have periodic part additions. Then looking out a little bit in the medium term, we plan on doing some back-end improvements, transferring of the database over to another database types that gives us more access and more information about it. There's a project underway to add temperature-dependent plots as well. So instead of doing everything versus frequency or versus voltage, you can do that also versus temperature. We're going to continue integrating that into our other Kemet digital properties. And looking out even further still, Almost a complete overhaul of the web platform technology, having it operate on newer newer web technologies. Of course, model improvements, fully parametric plotting, so essentially any Y versus any X. And then what we're calling our pro-level spec sheets, where this type of modeling and plots are available on the spec sheets themselves. And as I'm sure you know by now, we've acquired a company called Token, and that gave us access to inductors and magnetics. So we plan to incorporate that and bring that into KSIM as well. Excellent, that was really fun. Thank you so much for joining me, Wilmer. Well, thanks for having me here, Emilia. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find more information about KSIM from Kemet. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal or check out YouTube, keyword EE Journal.